Where's the thing? There it is. So I want to be right about there. All right. It's seven seven. So mostly exciting. Just don't even remember. I like the name. So real quick, seven seven took the idea of Riemann sums, and I have no idea how each of you felt about Riemann sums, but you really should have loved the shit out of it. It was just adding areas. Now you did get to the point. Remember when you had to do the sum of i and the sum of i squared? You guys remember doing that? Yeah. 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 No. If you don't. Who the hell taught you that? I want to know. What the hell? Shit, you're supposed to do that. But if you do, it doesn't show up, right? So we're fine. We're fine. The worst aspect of Riemann sums, we don't resurrect for this. It's still there. We just don't resurrect. Um, so Riemann sums, of course, is take a function and break it up into tri uh, triangles. Rectangles. Uh, what does uh, trapezoidal rule do? Yeah, talk about a great name. Can we invent uh, what does Simpson's rule do? Breaks them up into parabolas. Makes parabolic arches that kind of capture these things. I like it. Can we finish that up? Not really. I'll write it up. I don't want to really go through that tonight, to be honest. And, oh, but also, wasn't there like a calculator shortcut? Oh, um, yeah, I might as well show you guys that. In case no, you don't know. Are you just talking about second calc number seven? I don't know. Or you mean shortcut for the tables or something? I'm confused. You, you just mentioned a shortcut. Yeah. You didn't really get any more okay. than that. Understood. Um, well, shit, man. This has the calculator emulator. Hold on. That'll take a minute to warm up. So what I want to show you, real quick. Um, so like trapezoidal rule. Guys, trapezoidal rule, trapezoidal rule. Still has the width. We talked about why it's cut in half. Remember, because the area of trapezoid is one half height times the sum of the bases. Mm -hmm. Delta x is basically the height. Right? Remember, we looked at that. Just taking it and putting it like that. Um, and then you got this. It, it's adding up all these trapezoids. And trapezoids sitting next to another one shares the same size. That's why you have two of these and so forth. Blah, blah, blah. OK, so that's the form of trapezoidal. So what it boils down to is figuring out the width. So if I was doing it from uh, one to seven, right? I'm going to use, let's say I use um, three uh, trapezoids, right? What would the width be? Seven minus, uh, yeah. yeah, B minus six, seven minus one, yeah, seven minus one. Over, three. over three. Good, so that, that stays the same, thank God, right? Remember B minus A over N? Just to figure out how wide each shape is, in this case, trapezoid. So each one is two, all right? Is everybody with me? And then, if you want to do, so x0 would be one, and then x1 would be one plus two, and so forth, right? So you end up with a number divided by two, and then you just have this series of f values that you have to know. So one little shortcut, this would be three, I don't know if you guys really see where that's coming from. All right, the width is two. So one, add two, three, add two, five, and that's pretty much it. I only use three trapezoids, so that's pretty pathetic. Oh. So you can imagine, you're gonna use more than three trapezoids, correct? But you're gonna have a bunch of little function values to figure out. Yes? Where did the two from the fraction of delta x over two come from? So again, what was the area formula for trapezoid? One half delta oh. x. Yeah, so one half the height times the sum of the bases. So this is the half, this is the height, and these are these. The reason you have two is because they overlap, they share a side. So if we looked at all that last time. So that's the most I'll say about it. Uh, if you put the function, so say the function is, um, I don't know, 
uh, x cubed minus 7x squared plus 3. If you put that into, let me see if I can show you guys. Bop, bop, bop. Oh my god. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, well, we're screwed. I didn't even bring my own calculator, so I can't do that. If you put this into y1, the whole function. Yeah. So if you have a calculator, if you put that into y1, you could actually either use your table, right? I feel bad I didn't even bring my calculator. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this. Do you see table set? It's right above window. Yeah. Do you have a calculator? Table set. Mm -hmm. If you go into table set and you change independent to ask, you can actually fill in the xy table with your own values of x. Right now, obviously, you could actually just make delta x two and make the beginning one, and it would just populate it with all the stuff you need anyway. I have no idea if you guys are with me or not. So I under table set, you can either change it to ask for the independent, and then you just put directly in. One, all the stuff five, you want. Five, yeah. Or, since delta x is the same step, you could actually just make table start one, delta two. Because that's the width, yes? Alright, so maybe, maybe next time I'll do this, because I, I just didn't bring shit. Uh, I didn't bring my calculator, and they don't have the calculator on here, which sucks a lot. Do you want to show them? Oh, I can borrow yours, that's a good point. <laughs> I think we can see if they actually have it hidden. Nope. I actually have that up right now. Yeah, I got it. All right. Thank you. All right, so that's going to turn on someday. And then do you want me to point the camera at it when it turns on? Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Tonight's class brought to you by Panasonic. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty good. I'm pretty proud of that. Maybe if I fill calculus, I'll just be a cinematographer. That's a, yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> make a lot more bang. I'm just saying. All right. So. I think my day job will go fall on my shoes. This room is really uh, rough. Okay. Let me make this a little brighter. There we go. All right. Um, all right. So that's in there, right? Now, listen, listen. I'm going to do something, and then we're going to do the real thing. So above tables, above uh, window, it says table set, right here. It says table set right there. Mm -hmm. So you can either set it to ask, and then when you go to table, you can actually just input the numbers you want. So if I wanted to keep going, 7, 9, if I needed 1.258, all right, so that's kind of nice. So you can actually construct an XY table without actually having to put shit into the function because you're making the calculator do it. And it costs enough money, right? Uh, or, table set. Where do I want to start? One, because that's where the interval starts. And what do I want my width to be? Oh, shit and a half, Jeff. I want my width to be two. And I set it back to auto, and then it's just going to automatically just, oh, shit and a half, you should probably hit the... <laughs> Table. There we go. So I don't like to ignore all the rest of the stuff. I just need the first three, right? You guys semi with me? Yeah. Can you show that the table set again? Yeah. So right above window. So second window. You can either put the lower limit of the interval and then your width, because then the table will populate with exactly the values you need. Or you can set this to ask, because when you go to the table, you can actually put one, three, Five, right? You can just make it construct the interval for you, or the the, uh, the table for you. Um, there's something else that's good. Oh, if you are needing more decimal places than the table can give you, watch this. See the variables button? V A R S bars. You click that. Go to Y bars. Go to function. Go to Y one. Then you can tell it one. All right. So if you had a function, let me put a more complicated function in here. Let's say minus the square root of x, right? Let me do that. Shit and a half. Jeff. 
<laughs> oh my god. All right, screw it, screw it. I'm just going to put square root of x. Okay, let's just say that's my function, square root of x, right? What a great time. Okay, to be alive. So now that I've got it in there, I can just hit second enter. And now if I put in there like two, I can get more decimal places. So for example, in the book, in, on, on the, uh, in the online homework, it requests six decimal places sometimes. The table will not give you six decimal places. So you have to get it somewhere else. And you can still put it into Y1, and then this is how you can directly ask the calculator, hey, go get that Y1 shit, put something in there, right? And then you could say, and then you just go back up, change it to whatever else you need, copy that down. Are you guys semi? How do you find Y1, though? I'm, I, I didn't see that. Oh, Y1 is just, oh, so variables. Variables, variables right there, bars. bars. Oh, okay, okay. Function, sorry. I got bars, you. y bars, function, y1. Yeah, it's really, really nice and buried under a menu somewhere. Okay. Oh, boom, no idea. Have any of you guys ever seen any of that that I just showed you? Is it kind of interesting? Yes. yes. All right. So I mean, these things cost enough money. We might as well put them to work as much as possible. Okay. So. Yeah. Are there, like, is there a limit? Like, how many shapes you can do in the Riemann sum? Oh, no. Well, that's what an integral is. This is an infinite Riemann sum. Yeah. So, like, no, no, no. But, but his question is so we've used rectangles, we've used trapezoids, oh. we've used uh, things that have a curved top, right? For the parabolas, yeah. right? So your question is good. It's Is there a limit to what? No, there is. So we, it's we, just that the weirder the shape, the harder the math gets. So you have to have a really good reason, right? And if you get further in mathematics, anybody interested in, in majoring in math? Anybody? There's a really kick-ass class. It was called numerical methods when I took it. And you learn this thing called the cubic spline, which is just an awesome name, I'm sorry. <laughs> cubic spline. Uh, and it's sort of related to what you're talking about. But there's got to be a really good reason. And normally the approximation you get from Simpsons is just really good. Uh, but you can imagine, that's parabola. What about fitting it with a cubic? What about fitting it with a fourth power, yeah. right? Then the math gets harder, but the approximation gets better. Yeah. And then it's all a question of, I don't want to get too deep into this, but there's a competition to, not really competition, but you're always desperately trying to find a better subroutine for a computer program to integrate something, yeah. right? What is and so if any of you do computer science, you want to call these subroutines, and you can actually shop around for different pre-made subroutines, and which one's the best one to use, and it actually sometimes depends on the situations. And, uh, that's enough, that's, I'm sorry. Everybody, come back, come back. Okay. Get rid of all this business. Math is tough. Okay. I'll give you back your Don't let me steal your stuff. So, I am not, so, so uh, it's important to know that those exist. It's important to kind of call back Riemann sums. It's important in general to remember the things we're doing and what they were built from. So I love that section because it brings back Riemann sums so you don't forget, oh, that's where freaking integration started. We're doing all this weird ass trig sum and stuff. The basic idea of integration was just adding areas of rectangles, correct? And then we, and then we just did the simple thing of, Let's make infinite rectangles, yes? And if you just tell somebody, you know, what did you do today? Oh, I added up an infinite number of rectangle areas. That's all, you know, it works, <laughs> you know? And you did, many times. So now you're adding up trapezoids. And so I like that section, it's just not crazy important. Sometimes people hear me and they think that means the homework is done. No, you do the homework, right? But it really is just a bunch of plugging stuff in. Yes, so it really shouldn't be that evil. And I didn't give a lot of problems in that section, okay. So if I do put a problem on the test, I will, give, just like in the practice test, I will give you the rule. You just have to know what to plug in, yeah. Okay, um, so tonight, we're gonna finish up chapter seven, which means we're gonna do 7.8, which is where we finally figure out how to do an integral that either has infinity of some type in one of its limits, 
So either this kind of a deal, um, or an integral where the function goes to infinity at some point between the endpoints. Let me do that one first. Let's kind of set one up and try to see what we could do with it. So there is an inherent problem represented here. Let me see if I can make, yeah, I can do that. That's What's fine. the chapter name for 7 -8? Improper integrals. Yeah, improper integrals, thank you. Um, let me see, All right, I think I can do this. There we go, Jeff. Look at that, look at that stuff's happening. All right, it's always exciting to make a problem up on the fly. Now, I could just do this integral could you guys do this interval? Pretend like the limits aren't there. Maybe somebody sees what the, the issue, well, let me make it better. That's nah, fine, this is fine, this is fine. Um, can you do this interval? Yeah. Just ignore the limits for a second. Yes. That'd be partial fractions. Well, with this, no, 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 definitely not. You don't have to do partial fractions at all, right? X minus one is linear, basically X. How do you integrate one over X squared? Add one over oh, X squared. okay. Yeah, just make it x minus 1 to the power of negative 2. Yeah, so you negative 1 over x minus 1. And you think that you're golden here, right? But of course, what's the issue here? Yeah, so in general, you're not even allowed to apply the idea of integration unless you bring in the concept of limit. So the definition of a definite integral was built on the functions continuous, there's no infinities, and the endpoints are finite, right? So now we're starting to kind of expand our horizon a little bit. What if one of those things is not true? What if one of our limits is some kind of infinity? What if our limits are cool, but the function goes to infinity somewhere, right? Are you guys seeing the issue? Mm -hmm. So I would do this, the limit as t goes to 1 from above, see if you guys see why. And now I can officially do this because does this ever get to a point where this is undefined? No, by definition, the limit, so t never gets to 1, correct? Mm -hmm. So now, it's defined appropriately. It matches the requirements for doing a definite interval, and we can do it. Um, so we still get the same indefinite interval, correct? Right, negative 1 over x minus 1. So I want to evaluate it between t and 3, and I don't want to forget my limit. By the way, why is it from above? Because you're going, my, you're going Yeah, it's from one to three. So do I have anything below one involved in this problem? No. no. So it's only from above. Right? There would be no problem if this had been 1.01 to three, correct? There would have been zero problem. Right? There'd be no problem if it was 1.001. So I let t go to one from the right because that's where it's good. And it's still within what it wants. Okay, yeah, maybe. Let me stop there for a second. Now, some of these problems, it seems like doing extra. This problem is actually one of those. You can actually see the answer from what we did a minute ago. But there are many problems where if you don't bring the limit idea in, your answer will not come out correct. So let's see. Let's plug it in. So this is the limit. As t goes to 1 from the right, plug a 3 in, negative 1 over 2. Minus negative 1, so plus, plug a t in. And what is the limit as t goes to 1 of this? No. Because what does this go to? As t goes to 1 for the right, what does this go to? Zero. Positive infinity. infinity. So that's going to go to 0. So the answer is just infinity. No, this whole thing goes to infinity, correct? Yeah. I really want you with me. T is going to 1. As T approaches 1, this thing blows up. Oh. Right? Yeah. And why is it positive infinity? 
because, because I'm going from the right, right. right. So I'm always putting stuff bigger than one in for t, correct? Forever. So it's always positive. So this is bringing back some. some I'm glad that nobody has flinched excessively because normally limits. <laughs> I appreciate it. Normally limits are a bad memory for some people. There are some things with limits that we don't want to go back to. Uh, too bad. So. <laughs> Uh, let's try one this way, and then I'll give you my little handout that you might have guessed was coming um, for this. Somebody got what they want from this year? Yeah. Written in beautiful brown. It's like a burgundy. Burgundy? It's like a red brown. It's like a merlot. Okay. All right, this is going away. Nobody's yelling. Okay. All right, so what about this? Uh, so get out there, buddy. Integral from uh, 1 to infinity, um, 1 over x squared. Yes. So again, the official definition of integration, definite integral, requires the limits to be finite. And it requires the function to be defined across the entire interval. You guys with me? So the last problem we did, the function wasn't defined on the entire interval, correct? On this problem, is the function defined? Yes. Yes, because the only way it places not defined is zero, and zero is not in there. So that's not the kind of uh, improper integral we're looking at. This one is, holy shit, this just goes. Um, so 1 over x squared, you guys know what it looks like? One goes to one, yes? Yeah. So it kind of looks like this, yeah? Mm -hmm. Aren't I adding an infinite number of positive numbers to get this? Are you guys with me? Is that, isn't that what this is, essentially? I want to know this area. This area, this goes forever, yes? It goes forever, yes? So, of course, I'm trying to get you to say that you would expect this interval to be infinite. And it won't be. So let's see. And then I'll show you why concretely, I'll give you a concrete example of adding an infinite number of numbers and the answer is not infinity. So I'll give that to you next. Okay, I love you guys. Here we go. So what do you think I have to do? I have to do something exactly like what we just did. So limit as t approaches infinity. Limit as t approaches infinity now, right. Because t is a finite number. t is always a finite number because it never gets here now what's weird is infinity is not a numbers process, but oh well. Uh, and if anybody is somebody that in the past would just plug infinity in, like if I ask you what's the limit as t goes to infinity of, I don't care, x over one minus x, and you just say, okay, that's infinity over one minus infinity. If you ever do this, no, no, stop. <laughs> you are not allowed to plug something in that you can't even get to. And I've had people that just couldn't stop, so I finally got them to put BFN instead of infinity. BFN means, the nice way to say it, big freaking number. <laughs> so you can put a big freaking number in, you just can't put infinity in somewhere, because you can't get there to put it in. I, I hope you guys, uh, hopefully your teachers told you, you can't just plug infinity in when you're doing limits. You cannot. Okay. Uh, enough of that. Okay. So. That takes care of that problem, because now I'm not going to plug infinity in. I'm going to plug t in. I can do that all day. And you're dying. That sucks. Okay. What is, and of course, we basically just did the same integral. What's, what's this integral? Yeah, like negative 1 over So I'm going to go from 1 to t. Is everybody with me? Yes. I mean, put the limit. It's got to come with. And then you have a letter instead of an infinity or instead of a number like the first one we did. We just kind of carry it. And, and the integration itself does not change. You integrate the same way you always would. Now what am I going to plug in first? T. T. So I'll put negative 1 over T. Minus negative. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Minus negative. And then I'm going to plug in a 1. Why am I putting a 1, Jeff? I swear to God. Wednesdays are tough. 
I've been here since 6.30, so it's been a long day. Anyway, I'll be fine. I know. So please forgive me for uh, getting a few things incorrect. Um, so what happens as t goes to infinity? What happens to this piece? Goes to very tiny. Goes to zero. So what's the answer? One. Forget something? Oh, no, no, you didn't. Uh, I you thought what the integrals were like the variables, like one of the bounds. Don't you have to like bring the variable into the problem? Right? Think about something else. Yeah, we we we. Oh, we did. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally did. At this point, we had to evaluate it at t. Yeah. And then we do the limit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, somebody else. Um. You good? Okay. So is anybody? All right. So watch this. Um, I said earlier, and hopefully you guys all agree, because if you think about this as Riemann sums, they're really really tiny. Trying. I'm trying. Love it. Tiny rectangles. Aren't I adding an infinite number of, and we've done that before, right? Isn't that what Riemann sums is? Adding an infinite number of, of areas? Yeah. Did it come out to infinity? No. But if you just ask, ask somebody and you say, if I added an infinite number of numbers, what should I get? What do you think most people would say? Infinity. You should get infinity, right? Um, so let me show you a concrete example of that not happening. And the reason I'm doing this now is because it's related to this and it's related to chapter 11. Sequences I just want to kind series. of lay some of the groundwork. So sequences oh shit, yes, no, 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 no. Okay. That's um, basically the whole purpose. So obviously, if you're thinking about an infinite number of numbers and you think one plus two plus three, and you keep going, that's gonna add to infinity, correct? Or at least the sum is going to approach infinity. But what about this? Uh, also to infinity. No, that is not that. That adds to point one. Yeah. What does that add to? But it doesn't add to point one, one, one. Point one. one. Repeat it. <laughs> yes. Isn't there an infinite number of positive numbers here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't add to infinity. Mm -hmm. Now, one way I like to say this is it got out of its own way fast enough. I don't know if you guys understand what I mean. It's my own way of thinking about it. It got out of its own way fast enough. So this is all the way in the other decimal place. This is all the way in the next decimal. It got out of its own way. Right? So if I had something like 0 0.1 plus 0 0.099 plus 0.0. 00999. I don't know if that's getting out of its own way fast enough. So part of what we do in chapter 11 is we say, what types of these, what types of sequences where we add them, that's called a series, would come out to be a finite number and which ones wouldn't? Is that what diverges and converges is? Converges and diverges, exactly. And actually we're going to use exactly that notation for integration. So that first integral we did, and then, it's really been a day and a half, but I should have said this earlier. That first integral we did, which was like, um, what was it, one to? One over x minus one squared. Thank you. It was one to something? Three. One to three. One to three. And that came out to be infinity, right? Mm -hmm. We would say that that integral diverges. It doesn't converge. What does converge mean? It to, reaches a to point. Mean, to come to a point, right? You know, let's converge on it. You know, normally I'm thinking about some silly military show or something. We're going to convert each other. Whereas diverge means you, you go apart from each other, right? Like the four. Huh? Like the four. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. So this would be a divergent integral, whereas this one, no one is here. This one was convergent. Yeah. Crazy. Mm. Crazy. Okay. Crazy. You should remember that. Tons of words. Huh? I'm talking to the class. <laughs> All right. So here, you guys Very try director's this one. You guys, you guys try this one. Um, okay, set that up correctly. That Use your limits. Go to God. Oh. Yeah. Because, you know, divergence and convergence is the reason I'm taking this class right now, because I failed my, my calculus test, my right. BC. Don't let the words <laughs> freak you out. You know what they mean. Don't worry about that till we get there. Right. <laughs> I think I'll do better now. Second time around, you know. <laughs> Come on.
Is there a, a maximum number that LM can reach, or can it keep getting higher forever? Like, it doesn't stop going up, does it? Yeah, this is never becomes flat. The slope never becomes zero. So it reaches positive. Right? Because what's the derivative of natural log? Uh, one over one over as one over x, as x gets big, does it ever become zero? No. No. The limit is zero. Um, it never gets there. So since the derivative of natural log is one over x, this is the slope of, of natural log, correct? Mm -hmm. The slope never becomes zero, so natural log never flattens out, so it's always increasing, just so crazy, positive slowly, eventually. Yeah. So it diverges. Oh, you're trying to analyze it from that perspective. No, you just got to do the work. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm with you. So we'll diverge. Okay. Um, I thought you were trying to figure it out just from the graph, which you can't do. No. So. To get infinity plus zero. What's the interval of one over x? L and x. Absolutely. Yeah, why do I not need absolute value? Oh, because it's um because it's, it's positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh. You with me? My inputs are all positive, so of course it's gonna be positive. I don't need it. It's positive. positive. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? <laughs> when we get marked out, I'll stop, I'm sorry. Anybody with Italian heritage. You know. It just doesn't mean. When we get marked out if we put the absolute value for x, like No. Okay. As long as you don't make it mess you up later. Okay. Yeah. If it was an indefinite interval, I'd just put a note. You don't need these. But, um, all right, and this is going to be evaluated. Uh, I need my limit. It's going to be evaluated from 1 to t. So we get natural log of t minus natural log of 1. Is that cool? Of course, natural log of 1 is 0. zero. And of course, this goes to, which is what you were asking about. So this goes to infinity. So this interval does what? So what's the word? Diverges. diverges. This diverges to positive infinity. So you can diverge to negative infinity. You can diverge to positive infinity. I like it. So just about every interval we've ever done has been convergent. Come out to be a number, right? Yes? If the limits were switched, would it be uh Negative. Yeah, yeah. If the limits were switched, then you would have put the t in second, yeah. and then that would have, and then it would be negative infinity. Yeah. So it did diverge. Yeah, either way, it diverges. Right. Yes, so you're right. It did diverge. I just thought you were trying to think about it without doing this. Oh, no, no, no. So for that natural log, oh, I would like to infinity. You would put the f in, you would put infinity. Well, how's that different than the other? Number? No, no, no. I'm not putting infinity in. Okay. I'm saying this goes to infinity. So this limit is infinite. What's the LNT is going for that? Say again? What's like the notation you would use for that? Notation, what do you mean? Like what would you actually, like if you're writing it down? I would do this. You would just point to this. Yes. This is understood to mean that this part goes to infinity, therefore that. I just don't want it. What I'll see is I'll see people do this. They'll get natural log of x, and they'll have this. And they'll have natural log of infinity, natural log of And this is where I go a little insane. This is where I weep openly and made him. This hurt me to write. This doesn't make any sense. You can't do this. Shouldn't it be the uh, LX, the absolute value of infinity? No, because it's positive. No. So we don't need it. Good try. I like it. Okay. And again, if you don't see why you can't do this, because uh, you can only plug stuff in if you can actually 
get to it to put it in there, right? And there's other bigger reasons why you shouldn't be plugging infinity into places because then people start making a mistake like this. Is that true? No. Hell no. Could be. Depends. I don't know. Why is that not true? Do you guys remember why this statement is not true? This is false. Put that in your notes. Put false next to it. Maybe with a letter that's an actual letter in the alphabet. <laughs> because every time you subtract it, the infinity you're subtracting by can go up a little more. I think you are almost got it. You this depends that. on which one of these it. things was going to infinity faster. Uh. If this is going to infinity faster, this can't keep up. It goes to infinity. If this one's going to infinity faster, it goes to negative. If they're going to infinity at the same pace, it could have been a finite number answer. Maybe. So for example, watch. Uh, 10, 100, 1,000. 10,000, isn't that going to infinity? That little sequence of numbers? Uh, isn't this going to infinity? One, two, three, four, isn't that going to infinity? Mm -hmm. Yes? But what is the difference doing? What's the difference doing? This is nine, oh, this is 98. Going to infinity. This is 997, it's going to freaking infinity. Nine down to nine. You with me? Six. Maybe? Okay. So let me give you let me give you this handout. Yes. So could you theoretically start infinity at two different rates, uh, two different times that they have the same rate of increase? Because if they're both like yes. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about doing an example where they're going at the same pace, uh, but we'll see. Thank you. Could infinity is infinity at every number at the same time? Is not infinity every number at the same time? No. Or is it just increasing? Infinity describes a process. A process of continuing forever. Okay. Always growing. Where negative infinity always Capture the two types of uh, improper intervals. The first one's got an obvious infinite uh, limit, right? Infinite um, bound on the interval. So, of course, you would call those limits of the interval. Um, and the second one, of course, has a position in the interval function itself where it becomes undefined. Did everybody get one? Okay. Uh, and then I have two things for you to try. So, go ahead and try out number one. undefined on this interval? Where's this function undefined? On one half. Thank God that's not in this interval, yes? Because then it would have been infinity and a place where it's unknown, and that can happen. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah. It didn't happen here, so you're fine. You just have one thing to worry about. What's the case? Would it be like a piecewise integral or something like that? You have to break it up. Exactly. We're going to do one like that after the second example, and then we're going to leave. We're going to flee.
negative infinity squared positive infinity? We should not be squaring infinities. We're doing something wrong. Yeah, don't plug infinity in so you've got things simplified. Or, well, we'll see, we'll get there. Some of you guys can do this without use of. Really, I'm trying to get you to that point because there's going to be too much other stuff to worry about. Isn't the interior function there linear? Yeah. Right? So it is basically 1 over x cubed. I just have a constant that the chain rule would bring out that I just have to make sure I kill. So anytime the interior function is linear, I should not need use of. I just don't. Now, if you want to use it, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not saying you can't use it. I'm just trying to get you to a point where that's not itself a stumbling block. Um, did anybody get that integrated? It's negative one half two t minus one. No, 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 no t's. I don't understand. Oh, sorry. Uh, two x. Wait, what are you looking at? All right, so. What is um, this thing integrated? Negative two over x squared. Three over x. Yeah, we have to do negative two over negative two, correct? Right? So this would be like uh, yes, and negative two one x over two x squared. Wait, are you dividing it by? So you got two, right? So it would become x to the negative 2 over negative 2, right? Okay. Just using the, the rule. Plusy. So don't worry about plusy here, of course, right? You've got a definite integral. So now watch. So this will be basically uh, 2x minus 1 to the negative 2 over negative 2. But then if that was the answer, there should be another 2 coming out. Because, and so you just have to put another 2 to kill that 2. Again, if you want to use U sub, you can. It's fine. Right. So uh, it'll be that to the negative two divided by negative two. But chain rule would have brought another two out. I better kill it. Bang. And I want to evaluate this between t or zero. Right. You could use a U sub all day if you want to. That's fine. Nothing wrong with it. I'm trying to get you to a point where you don't need it. Infinity. So plug a zero in. What do you get? Zero. Well, you get negative one to the negative two is one over negative four. So you get negative one four. That's yes. I thought. T oh, never mind. We just thought let t equals infinity and then just carry it out because I thought t was a positive, but never mind. T can be. Yeah, T itself is going to negative infinity. Okay, because they put negative T, I think that's... Oh, yeah, don't do that. Trust me. It'll get your... Uh, when you plug stuff in, it'll get it confused. Yeah, let T go to negative infinity when that's what's there. Is that cool, just putting a zero in? Yes. Yeah. Negative one to the negative two is one over negative one squared, which is one over negative four. And then minus negative, so plus, when you put T in, what do you get? t minus 1 to the negative 2 over 4. Yes? And that's a plus because I did minus and negative. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Now, what happens to this piece? Remembering this. Yeah, this is really on the bottom, right? So when t goes to negative infinity, it approaches 0. Oh, this is why you're asking when negative yeah. is it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's over some kind of infinity, so the whole thing goes to 0. Therefore, this is negative one four. Now remember, real quick, I just want to 
Remember when we did this before, a minute ago? And did it diverge? Yes, remember that? This diverged. Remember when we did something like this earlier? Did it converge? And we basically just did this. And it, and it converged, right? So it feels like if the powers keep getting bigger, it should converge. And why does that make sense? If the powers keep getting bigger, the numbers I'm actually adding are themselves smaller, yes? I'm, like, I'm dividing by bigger, bigger shit. So this a first power somehow isn't making it small enough. So when I add them up, they do go to infinity. This diverged. We did this one earlier. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So again, we haven't proven it. If we haven't even done enough to verify this, I probably know the answer. But I'm just trying to say, look at some stuff we've noticed so far. We did a squared. We did a 1 over x. And then we just did a cube. The squared and the cube converged. But this one diverged that might become like a thing. It might become like a rule later, but we have to kind of do more work with it to make it generally true, to see, to, to see if it's really true. Why is that just negative one fourth? I don't know. Um, you put a zero in? What do you get when you put a zero in? Zero minus one is negative one? Yeah, but I distribute, I, I get everything out, so this is why. So, to be really honest, the way I would have wanted to have written this Let's see if this is better. Negative infinity. Uh, one over, negative one over four times two x minus one squared. So what is it when you put a zero in? Negative one four. Zero minus one is negative one. Squared is one times four is four. Negative one fourth, right? Putting a zero in doesn't make the zero. It makes this zero. Oh, right. And so the rest of it's still there. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Anytime. Okay, so that integral is negative one fourth. Yes? When you say the words converge and diverge, what exactly do you mean? So did this integral converge? Yes. Why? Because it, it came to a single point. point. Came out to a finite value. Okay. If the answer is some kind of infinity, it diverges. It's very, it's very like definitive, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, what about number two? Number two looks exciting, yes? Sure. <laughs> what did you say, Jeff? Uh, <laughs> I know you've got probably would use a different adjective. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, some of those adjectives could even be things you don't want to utter in mixed company. I don't know. Um, some of those. <laughs> but does anyone notice why it's not nearly that bad of a thing? <laughs> because it's you, so. So how do I have to rewrite it and why? Why do I have to rewrite this? Why do I have to use a limit? Jeff. Huh? Jeff. So are one of these infinity? No. So what's the only other thing that we know of right now that would make it an improper interval? Pi over six sine is one half. Yeah, the sine of pi over six one. is one half. So one minus twice one half is one minus one is zero. So pi over six makes the function undefined. Yeah. So therefore, I am not allowed to use pi over six. I'm not. This, you guys with me? Yeah. The function is not defined at 5 or 6. I can't use it. So the way around that is a tool we've already used. It's a tool we used in calculus. We designed it so that I can investigate places I'm not supposed to go to. That's what the limit was created for. So whenever I teach limit to my calculus students, did I do this with you guys? The blob? The blob? Something crash lands on Earth, and you come up and you're like, what the hell is that? And the mistake the guy, if you've ever seen the movie The Blob, I don't know, I love horror movies. He actually touches the damn thing. And he goes, Bleh. and eventually eats him and so he eats the whole thing. Right? Sorry if you don't like horror movies. Right? So the mistake he made was he touched the damn thing. He should have used the limit idea. Uh, like a stick. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get really close to it and go, okay, I'm gonna. And then the movie doesn't happen. It's just great little thing, stars in the town. Nobody gets eaten. Right? That would have been great. It would have made it more boring, boring movie. Um, so we created limits to investigate places we're not allowed to go. I don't like that. I want to go there. Give me a break. Um, what was this again? One minus two sign up? Yeah. All right. We'll give me remember something. So does anyone see an easy kind of way forward here? U equals sign up. Yeah. I think somebody said exactly what? What? 
The gas. Oh, because you get rid of one. Let you equal the whole damn thing. We're totally allowed to do that shit. What's the U? Negative 2 cosine x dx. Taking the acid. So what do I need? I need a negative 2 inside? Yeah. Of course, that's negative 1 half. Yeah. So then we get something much, much better. And I, I should have done this first, but that gentlemen, before you do any work, you really do have to kind of do this. It's all right. We did a little bit of work. So what does this look like now? Let me just put it together before we move forward. Like this, right? One over root u. Oh, no, I'll, I'll catch up. Okay. All right. Now we're allowed to do stuff too. Officially. Yeah. Right. So, through the t approaches r over six. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. From the negative. Thank you. Thank you. It's got to be from the right for the same reason. I don't want to go outside of this interval. Uh, this this interval, so I can't go above pi over six. So I want to approach pi over six from the left. So it's really visually what I'm doing is I'm going from zero, I don't know what the hell this function is, well let's pretend we'll say this. <laughs> zero to pi over six, but I'm not allowed to be at pi over six because something weird happens at pi over six. So I'm gonna say, find this area here, right? And then I'm gonna let this get really close to pi over six and just see what happens, right? We're not gonna be like the old guy in the movie from the 80s when he actually touched the blob. Don't, don't, don't touch it, there's a limit. That's a good life lesson, okay. <gasps> So now let's rewrite this. Uh, negative one half, zero to t. This, of course, is du. I really don't like putting du up top. I don't know, it's just me. And on the bottom, I just get, let's do it even smarter. This will be square root of u. u. So I can write that as u to the negative one half. Negative one half, beautiful, because it's on the bottom. This one. Now see, some of you guys might have thought, and there's nothing wrong with this thought being, some of you might have thought let u equal sine, because then the derivative is cosine. But anytime you have like a linear thing, let u equal the whole damn thing. Because the other part of it's going to get out of the way. And then you're going to get something that looks so much better than it would have. Yes? Uh, well, I Oh, oh, thinking ahead a little bit, sure. Yeah, you can think ahead a little bit, I love it. There's a lot of little things you could do, and I'm gonna to try to do the thing that I think most people would think. Well, there's a ton of stuff you could do differently and think ahead and such. I think that's what you're talking about. Like, thinking ahead about what's, where this is gonna go? Is this what you're talking about? the one half out, you could just leave it in, and then one over two root u is, the integral of one over two root u is root u. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, I love it. So thinking ahead about where that the answer would've come from. Thinking ahead about where the, what this has to be to come back to. Okay, 11. Um, so if we just look at this though real quick, how do we integrate u to the negative one half? Two u to the one half. Yeah, yeah, it'll be u to the one half and then you divide by the new power, so that's two. And now everybody sees what he was talking about, right? These, these will cancel anyway. And I want to evaluate that from zero to t. And, and what was u? One minus two sine. Negative one half. Two times one minus two sine x. Uh, to the one half. Zero to t. So when I put a t, all right, all right give me a hug. Come on, I got it, okay. Uh, so the negative one half and the two become negative. Uh, one minus two. So limit, negative one half times two is negative. One minus two sine t, right? So plug a t in. Minus the negative, so plus one minus two sine zero. Okay, right? Just plug in stuff in. Plug the t in, plug the zero in. Yes? What does it say on the bottom? The negative one half times three times one minus two sine x, because that's what u was, right? Oh, okay. U was uh, one minus. Uh, I, I think I erased it. Earlier, but u was one minus two sine x. 
So it just brought that back, yeah. So that just puts the power of the one half. Of course they did. Why would they? Okay. Sorry. I knew eventually it wouldn't matter, but it's good to put it there. Thank you. So it's one. Yeah, either way it's one. So we get, well, let t go to pi over six. What's sine of pi over six? Uh, one half. One half times two? One. One minus one? Zero. Yeah. Zero to the one half? One. This doesn't mean zero. Yeah. I like that. That's all. Awesome. And then the other one's one. Yeah, one minus two sine zero, sine zero. zero is zero, so you get one to the one half. One! Oh my god. That was a fun one. I love it when people are like, oh, the answer is one. That, that, to me, that's awesome. All that weird shit came out to be one. It kicks so much ass. All right, guys, I think you'll agree with me. I'm just going to do one more, but I'm not going to, so we're going to call that a night. Okay. Uh, Monday. Mm -hmm. I'll do, I'll do a couple more of these just to show you what other things you could end up seeing. Over the weekend, do as much homework as you can. Try to do some of the practice tests and I'll have the answer key Monday. So test cor or quiz corrections, we just give to you on test day? Yeah, they're due by the day of the test. So, so we can people, give them to you before. You can give them to me right now. Okay. You can give it to me the minute you get done. Could you give it to me on the day of the final and still get points? Yes, you can. And would you like... Just you want, will be very, very few points. Do you want the, any. Do you want the corrections to be like, you copy it down on a separate piece of paper? Separate piece of paper. Don't change the original. Okay. Yeah. Uh, homework is due on Monday. Wednesday. Wednesday. Day of the test. Day of the test. Uh, yeah. Oh, ready.